Now you seem to enjoy my review of the Framework 13. So thankfully the company sent me their 16 inch model as well. After I return the 13 inch, of course, they're not gonna let me keep that. So what I got is the 16 inch with the 7840 HS CPU and the dedicated 7700S GPU. And that's an interesting laptop to be sure. There's even more modular parts, a removable dedicated GPU. There is a lot to talk about here. And of course, we'll run Linux on this big bastard because that's what we do here. And also, of course, we have this segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Proton Mail. You know about them probably. You know that they offer a fully end-to-end -end encrypted and zero access encrypted email solution, but they also have a complete platform of services to do your calendar, your email, your contacts, your online storage, your password managers, and even your VPN all with one single account that cannot be accessed even by Proton employees. They've got all the features that you'd expect to protect your privacy, but also to help you actually do your job. And while the base account is free, they of course have paid plans if you need more storage and more features. Proton Mail is what I use for all my personal email, calendar and contacts, and I've been using them for more than a year now. I'm very, very happy with the service. And if you want to take advantage of all of this privacy and all of these features, the link is in the description. Okay, so the framework I got was the DIY edition for do it yourself. So I had to assemble some parts of it myself. It came with the GPU module already installed, which is nice. That GPU module cannot be hot swapped like you would with one of the ports. You have to remove the keyboard and the metal plate underneath with a screwdriver. So the laptop has to be turned off and you're not going to get rid of that thing too often. Right now, there's also nothing you can replace that GPU with. So unless you want to get rid of some of the weight, you might as well leave it in if you bought it. It's not like it's going to use a lot of your battery life because sure, that discrete GPU is always on in the background, but it's only really used when you need it. Linux is good at detecting that sort of thing. It is a hybrid laptop and it just doesn't use the discrete GPU unless you really need it. Now, this expansion bay is more for when Framework releases a new GPU so you can replace the old one, more so than just being able to hot swap it and replace it, I don't know, with a battery or something. Now, mostly all I had to do to get mine assembled was adding in the keyboard and the touchpad. And on the 16 inch, you have a lot of leeway. You can have a centered keyboard without a numpad. You can align your keyboard to the left or the right without a numpad, or you can have a keyboard and a numpad. That numpad can be placed to the left or to the right. Same goes for the touchpad. You can have it centered or offset to the right or to the left. It's very modular, very easy to set up, and you have these little separators that you just slide wherever you want. All the connections are magnetic and very easy to handle. There are no ribbon cables to remove that might break after a while. It's all done in a few seconds. It fits into place without any trouble. All you have to do is pull two little latches. These spacers even have colored variants, including ones with LED if you want. That is hot swappable. So it's really awesome because when you need to have the numpad for, I don't know, doing a lot of numbers input or calculus or Excel spreadsheet, you can have it. And when you want to use your laptop in a more relaxed manner and you want to have a more aesthetically pleasing centered experience, you can have that in a few seconds. You pop open the latch, you remove the touchpad, slide out the keyboard and just change how things are. It takes a second. All you have to do is carry around all these little spacers and modules. Now this does come with a drawback though, which we'll talk about on the design section of this video, but resting your palms on that laptop is not as comfortable as with other devices. Now, obviously, like with the 13 inch, you can remove the display bezel as well. You can remove the SSDs because there are two slots for SSDs. You can remove the RAM and the Wi-Fi module, but all of this came pre-installed in my review unit. You also have the same modular ports system as the 13 inch, and the two seem like their modules are perfectly compatible, which is nice. My review unit came with an ethernet plug, which is pretty big and sticks out of the side of the laptop. Uh, so you're clearly not letting that one installed all the time. 
Not all slots have the same USB speeds either in the 16 inch. The ones closest to the display are USB 4, meaning they will give you better speeds with USB A ports, but they'll also draw more power with these ports. Only the top two slots on each side can be used for USB charging as well, not the ones closest to you, which makes sense because you're not going to want to have the cable too close to you anyway in the way of your hands. Anyway, as usual, you get the nice little screwdriver with a removable head uh, for the two variants of the screws that you need to unscrew to assemble your laptop. The guides that framework has are very clear, very easy with videos. The assembly process just takes a few minutes, it's really nice, and it's kind of fun. Now, as with most modular things, the more modules you have, the less solid a device feels. And that's also the case with the Framework 16, which feels less like a solid one-piece device than the 13-inch. And no, I don't mean that the 13-inch embarked on a friendship cruise on a pirate ship. I mean, it feels less unibody, less rigid. Not that it flexes or anything, because it's still a nice big block of aluminium with very little bending or flexing. But you definitely feel the keyboard moving a tiny bit under pressure. The little sliding pieces aren't 100% locked in place and touching them makes them wiggle just the tiniest bit, which is enough to make a tiny, tiny sound and that's enough to make you feel like the laptop's enclosure is made of multiple different parts. Which it is, but it doesn't feel cheap in any way. You are still trading a little bit of comfort, aesthetics and touch satisfaction for the benefits of having everything modular. It's a trade-off I'm personally willing to make, but also I kinda don't like seeing all these seams. The laptop is also pretty huge. The GPU module sticks out of the back about 1.5 centimeters, and the display has massive bezels at the top and the bottom, so it's 16 by 10, but it could probably be 3 by 2. The laptop is meant to be a portable workstation, not a thin and light. It can be carried around, but it's still 2.4 kilos, so about 5.3 pounds. And the footprint is massive at 35 centimeters by 27 for 2 centimeters in height at its thickest point. It is a powerful laptop that can be carried around, but you do not want it in your bag for hours. Design-wise, it's the usual silver and black, potentially with the orange screen bezel that you'll never catch me using, but it can be fun if you're not as color adverse as I am. It's a nice looking laptop, it's just less unibody than I'm used to. But who cares? It looks good, it's functional, it's modular, repairable, so this is a trade-off that is absolutely acceptable. Now, how well does it run Linux and how powerful is it really? So I decided to go with Fedora 41 on this laptop because it was just released at the time I got the review unit and it's the most vanilla distro I could think of. And the install went without a hitch, apart from the pre-installed windows on the SSD that I had to set up so I could go into it and disable BitLocker and then I could wipe the drive clean. The install failed otherwise, but that won't be an issue if you don't buy your laptop with Windows pre-installed. After that, I had nothing to do. Every part of that laptop worked as advertised, with the dedicated GPU being recognized and used for the right programs automatically in hybrid graphics mode. The touchpad, the speakers, the ports, the mic, the webcam, everything just works. Framework did a lot of work to upstream everything, although apparently they still list Arch as working with workarounds for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and the fingerprint reader. Which, yes, also works out of the box on Fedora to unlock your computer or just go through things in the terminal. It's really, really useful. So I had zero hardware-related problems in my Linux experience over the, what, um, I think it's been a month since I started using it. It's been great. Now, in terms of performance, in Geekbench 6, the laptop got 2551 in single core and 11,314 in multi-core, which is about the highest uh, of all laptops I reviewed on that channel. The Ryzen 7840HS is a really powerful chip and it will handle anything you throw at it without breaking a sweat. You can even upgrade it to a 7940HS. As per gaming, I ran a few benchmarks. Horizon Zero Dawn at the native 2560 by 1600 resolution and ultra settings got 82 FPS, which is 
perfect. Shadow of the Tomb Raider got an average of 72 FPS at the native resolution and ultra settings. It is a very powerful laptop, it will let you game at 1080p or even 1440p with very high settings. And it's an AMD GPU, so no Nvidia driver weirdness to work around here. But it does mean some stuff is a bit harder to do than with an NVIDIA GPU, for example DaVinci Resolve, uh, this is the video editor I use for every single one of my videos, and it doesn't support AMD GPUs that well. I had to install OpenCL, I had to install ROCM, and I tried two ways of installing DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Box, which is a containerized one-click install, which did not result in a usable Resolve for me, even when forcing it to use the discrete GPU and the manual install which worked after I installed everything I needed and forced Resolve to open with the discrete GPU. But Resolve here runs with OpenCL, not CUDA, and the performance is just not the same. Even though technically it should be more powerful than my current laptop or about on par with its 4060, it's really not and there are way more stutters every time I apply effects it takes longer it's just not as smooth probably because Resolve is better optimized for CUDA than for OpenCL. In the end still it is nice to see that you can use Resolve on an AMD GPU and you don't even need to install the proprietary AMD drivers anymore so that's cool. In terms of battery life you have an 85 watt hour battery in this thing which with the display brightness lowered to 50% on Wi-Fi, playing YouTube videos in a loop in Firefox, it got me around 7 hours and 15 minutes, which isn't too bad. And that was on GNOME without variable refresh rate because it's not turned on by default and I did not enable it. And that was with the display at 165 Hz. You can lower that to 60 Hz. And if you use a variable refresh rate enabled desktop, you're probably going to save some battery life in there as well. Now let's talk about all the rest of the hardware. The display is 2560 by 1600, it goes up to 165 hertz and it is fantastic. It's 16 by 10 which is fine but it does have big bezels. The display itself works really well though, it has a 1500 to 1 contrast ratio, it supports 100% of DCI-P3, it has variable refresh rate and free sync if your desktop supports that and it goes up to 500 nits of brightness, it is a great display. I won't dwell on the webcam and the mic, it's 1080p 60 but it's still potato quality, the microphone picks up on every key press on the fan noise, it's just whiny and noisy, it's serviceable for video conferencing but not much else. Now you do have privacy switches for the webcam and the microphone so that's pretty neat. The keyboard is excellent here, the keys have far more travel than you'd think and they feel really nice with a little clicky muted sound that I really enjoy. I did not expect a hot swappable keyboard to feel that good but it's one of the best laptop keyboards I've used on par with the 13 inch and the best ones out there, it's really good. You also have the fingerprint reader on the power button which worked perfectly for me on Fedora without any additional stuff to install. The touchpad though was not as nice. The touchpad itself is super smooth, it's glass, it clicks well, it works really well with touchpad gestures, it is the usual dive board mechanism so you can't really click at the upper part of it unless you enable tap to click. The issue here is that the touchpad module wiggles just a little bit and you can feel it when moving around, when you're doing the gestures, when you're clicking and that's not great. It's not the touchpad itself, it's the touchpad module that you slide into the laptop, whether it's to the left, to the center or to the right, and it just has this little wiggle room which means that every time you click you feel that it's not just clicking up and down, it's also moving a tiny bit to the right and to the left and that doesn't feel as solid, as good or as premium as on other laptops. It's not a big problem, I'm really nitpicking here, but you can feel it and it is a drawback of having that modularity. Speakers are really solid, they won't disappoint, they don't reverberate in the chassis which must have been tricky to pull off with such a modular ensemble of plates popped and locked on top of the main laptop and they have a decent amount of bass. Really not bad speakers at all. As per the sound the laptop makes under load, 
it is a laptop, you will hear the fan when you're gaming or using it to edit videos, but it's not the whiniest and highest pitch fan I've heard. So to conclude, I like the Framework Laptop 16 more and also less than the 13 inch. I like it more because it is a far better suited laptop to my needs. I need a big screen, I need some room to work and to edit videos, I need a discrete GPU and this gives it all. But I like it less because it feels less nice, less rigid, less solid to use. Now, don't get me wrong, it is still heads and shoulders above a lot of the plasticky crap that you can find from a lot of well-known mainstream manufacturers where the keyboard kind of folds in half at the slightest pressure of a finger, but also all the seams between the plates and separators and the fact that everything can be moved around on the framework means that it doesn't feel as solid and as rigid as the 13 inch and some other aluminium laptops. Some people really will not mind, but I will admit my weirdo brain is always going back to rubbing my nails against these seams. My eyes are just drawn to them. It is a bit distracting and I'm not a big fan, but also I'm a weird French dude making Linux videos on the internet, so don't listen to me. It's a trade-off that I am personally 100% willing to make for all that customization, all that modularity and all that repairability. Just know that you do feel, see and notice those themes between the various elements. If that's something that annoys you, it will annoy you here. As per the price, it is a modular and repairable laptop so it is mighty expensive. The cheapest option with a power brick and 16 gigs of RAM because you're not getting that kind of laptop with 8 is 1928 euros including the gigantic 20% French VAT which obviously you won't pay everywhere in the world. If you want the discrete GPU it goes up to 2378 euros and you only have the barest minimum selection of ports black basic spacers and only 250 gigs of SSD. It is definitely not a cheap device for what it does. But also over the course of 5-10 years when maybe you would have replaced that laptop twice, you might just have upgraded once the GPU maybe for 500 bucks, once the main board maybe for a thousand bucks. So instead of buying three laptops over 10 years at two grand each, you would only have bought one and added like maybe another two grand. That's far less expensive. And also you're not chucking an entire perfectly capable device in the bin or giving it out. So in the end, I think it evens out, but it is more cash upfront. Anyway, to conclude, I'll say I really love Framework and their mission. I'm really sad I'm gonna have to send this one back because I absolutely loved using it every day for the past month. If I needed a brand new laptop right now, chances are I would be eyeing the framework and it would be a tough decision. I really love buying from Linux focused manufacturers like Tuxedo, like a Slimbook, like System76, but also this laptop, this framework has repairability, upgradability built in as a feature and I absolutely love that. But you do need a lot more money up front and you have some trade-offs in terms of visuals, in terms of how things move under your fingers and in terms of the feeling of using the laptop. So you'll decide if that's for you or not. Personally, I would recommend this laptop to anyone who wants to run Linux and wants to have a more sustainable approach to electronics and personal computing. Anyway, this will be it for me for this video. I hope you enjoyed. As always, you have all the usual YouTube buttons. Don't hesitate to click them to subscribe. It really, really helps the channel uh, survive, basically. And if you really want to help the channel, there are also plenty of links in the description that will give you plenty of cool perks starting at $1 or Euro per month. So check that out if you're interested. In the meantime, thank you all for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.